Hi, I've been working on a, uh, a name tag for some of the train shows that I attend uh, for the last couple of weeks, and I've got it pretty much the way I like it. It's got just a couple of blinking LEDs and a small circuit board on the back and a, uh, a 2032 uh, watch battery uh, to power it and a magnet, of course, to hold it to your, uh, to your clothing. But what I'd like to show you today, uh, not so much about this, but about the circuit that drives it. And if you take a close look, you'll see that the components are rather small. These are surface mount components. And I'd like to take a few minutes to show you some tricks that I've picked up over the years that make it a little bit easier to work with surface mount components. Uh, first question, I guess, is why surface mount? Well, this is a uh, microcontroller. That's a 12F683 PIC processor. And that's the standard dual inline pin, uh, eight pin package. Not particularly large. Uh, here's a penny that I can put next to it just to give you a comparison. But this is the surface mount equivalent. It's the exact same chip, does the exact same thing. It's programmed in the same way. And as you can see, I can take that little thing and put it right on top. So it gives me an opportunity to make a much smaller uh, device. And when I want to have something fit on the back of a name tag, uh, it's got to be relatively small. Okay, let's start off by uh, looking at some surface mount components. This is the processor that I was talking about. This is a, uh, a resistor. This is a surface mount resistor. This happens to be a 10K resistor. This is a 470 ohm resistor that I'll be using in a couple of minutes. And this is the circuit board. Now, the other big difference between the through hole and the surface mount is hopefully you can see the little pads on here. There are eight small pads that align properly with the eight uh, pins sticking out of the side of the, uh, the microcontroller. The big difference there is if I'm working with through hole, I've got to have eight holes that are going to line up that I can plug this thing into. It's much less expensive when they're manufacturing to create a circuit board like this and of course to place things on it. Uh, surface mount was really designed more for automation than for being done by hand. But what we want to do is to put that little chip right there. We've got to put one of the resistors here and one of the resistors over here. A couple connections for the power, a couple connections for the LEDs and we're done. The first step is to gather some tools. I have a spool of, uh, of solder over here just in a little stand so it's easier to work with. Uh, I have a jeweler's eyepiece that I use uh, to uh, take a close look at solder joints to make sure they're okay. This is a pair of spring-loaded tweezers which are very nice. I can go down and, and grab a component and the fact that they're spring-loaded means I can let go and the spring will hold that in position. Very nice, particularly when you're working with the surface mount resistors. Okay, what we want to do is to place this chip on this position on the, uh, the circuit board. And I'll superimpose a picture over this of the close-up of the circuit board, but it has a little uh, notch right here that indicates pin 1. And this chip has a little dimple at pin 1. So what we're going to do is line it up so that pin one and the dimple go together. Now the first step is soldering a, just a tad of solder on one of the pads. What I'm gonna do is heat up my soldering iron. It's about 520 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about, uh, about 300 degrees C or thereabouts. And I'm going to put just a little drop of solder on Actually, it's pin eight. It doesn't matter which one I do. I usually pick one of the corner ones. And tin that little spot. Then I'm gonna pick up the chip. Now, you'll notice that I do most of this with my bare hands. I'm not that worried about getting a little burned. I'm used to it. But you certainly could be holding that with the tweezers rather than with, the, uh, uh, with your thumb. And I'm going to bring the solder and the iron together on that same pad and I've got a nice solder joint. My pins are still nicely aligned on the, uh, the pads. Then I'm gonna go and pick a pad fairly far away from that one. And then I can go ahead and finish off the pads on this side. 
turn it over, do the pads on this side. Okay, that's all eight. Now, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm kind of surprised that I didn't wind up with something called a solder bridge between two of those. It happens quite frequently. Let me clean my iron again. Oh, I should show you. This is a very important part of my toolkit. It's a spun aluminum uh, pad that I use to clean the tip of the soldering iron. I clean it all the time, and it keeps it nice and, uh, and fresh for solder joints. But at, back to what I was saying. Uh, it's not the least bit unusual to get a couple of these there we go. A couple of these pads joined together in something called a solder bridge. There I've got pins one and two stuck together. Now there's a number of ways that you can remove those. There's a device called a solder sucker which is a little uh, hand vacuum that you can use to pull it off. You can use uh, uh, solder wick. What I choose to do most of the time is I'll take my iron and put it on there and kind of pull it between the pins and sometimes that'll clear it. In this case it didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that blob of solder up so it's fluid. Then I'm going to bang this circuit board down onto the work pad. Let's see what happens there. And you may notice there's a little blob of solder on the pad that wasn't there before. And if you look closely, that solder bridge is gone. So it's simply a matter of heating up the solder bridge, banging it on your work surface. And because these surface mount components, for that matter, the through hole components are pretty tough, you're not going to hurt anything. At least I've never had any problem uh, in the years that I've been doing this. Okay, the next thing I want to do is put the 470 ohm resistor on. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on one of its pads, just as I did the other. Now the 470 is way too small for me to do just with my fingers, so I'm going to pick it up with the tweezers. I'm going to bring it over to that solder pad and the top end of that 470 whoop I didn't have it quite hot enough I was gonna say is attached let me add a little bit more solder there we go now I can let go and it's gonna stay now I can go to the other side of the um, resistor and solder that side and just to be sure, I'm going to put a little more solder on the top. And the last thing I want to do is put the 10K. That one I might be able to do with my fingers, but the first step is to put a little bit of solder on one of the pads, bring that 10K up onto that pad. And by the way, resistors, it doesn't matter which way you put them on. It's not like a diode or a transistor or something like that. And a little bit of solder on the other end. and we should be in business with that. Okay, solder bridges. Now there's one other type of solder mishap that you sometimes need to recover from. Uh, I have little jumpers that go into the holes here so that I can change the behavior of the lights. I can have these, uh, these blinking lights either blink or fade or uh, flash on and off. There's all sorts of options. But sometimes you'll get a little bit of solder in one of these holes. Let me show you. If I fill a hole that this uh, jumper should go into with solder, I can use a variation of the same trick. I can clean my soldering iron, go in there, heat that up nice and hot, and bang that down. You notice there's a big blob of solder now on my work table, and that hole is clean. If it's not 100% clean, what I'll do sometimes is take a toothpick, and I'll heat the solder up, and I'll push the, the toothpick into it, and of course the solder won't stick to the toothpick. That helps to clear that hole out as well. The only thing you need to be careful about when you're banging this, of course, make sure you have glasses on because you could have a spatter of solder hit you in the face, which I've never, never had that happen to me, but I'm sure it could, could take place. The other thing is to make sure that when the solder comes off of the board, it doesn't stick to some other pad or some other component. Both of these cases, I've had a nice straight shot down onto the, uh, the work pad and it clears rather nicely. Okay. I'm going to finish up soldering this, and I'm going to do another video on the details of this little uh, uh, flashing uh, badge and how you could make that with a laser cutter and the, uh, the circuit board and the, uh, the program that's on that chip. But for now, I just, uh, I'm just i pleased that I was able to show a couple of things that you can do with surface mount components. They're not that hard to work with. just takes a little bit of practice.
Thank you.